Hi guys, this is Daniel with Adam Audio and today we're going to answer the most important questions about acoustic treatment for creators. So I'm here today with John from Kiss Your Ears. John, can you briefly introduce yourself? Hey there, I'm John. Um, Kiss Your Ears and I make quality affordable acoustic treatment empowering music makers rather than profiting at their learning curve. So John, what is acoustic treatment? Well, acoustic treatment refers to the propagation of sound within a space. Either the process of treating how this propagates or the elements that are used in this treatment. For example, the absorption panels that you see around here. And why do we need it? Essentially, it's a tool like any other in your process. For example, you don't need acoustic treatment to mix this track to get that deal, but it will make you do it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And you know, if time is money, it's there for efficiency. It's simple as this. It's a tool like any other. What do you need to know about acoustic treatment? Need to know. Uh -huh. The first thing you need to know is that 90% of your treatment will be velocity absorption mm -hmm. in most cases. It could be 100%. The next thing that many people don't really understand is how low velocity absorbers can, absorbers can actually go. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite common to be able to resolve all resonant sub issues down to 40 hertz with proper velocity absorption. That means that it, the units themselves are optimized depth by density and mass in the volume of space. And by mass, I mean how many units you bring in. Another common misconception is that people don't realize how many bass trapping units you actually need in the room. Some rules of thumb, quadratic floor space. Um, you need one unit like, like these around us, um, how these are engineered, depth by density, per meter square of the floor space to create a good production suite. You need 1.5 of these units per meter square of your floor space of the room to create a good mixing suite. The next thing that's quite important is that your treatment can be sequential. You don't have to immediately treat all your issues. You also can benefit from the 80-20 rule. Take care of 20%, you might get rid of 80% of the problems that are bothering you. So what are common mistakes that you should avoid when treating your room? Looking forward to this question. Mm -hmm. So. The three most common mistakes that I've found so far. Number one, speaker distance from walls. The speakers must be equidistant from the walls at their relative side position. Um, this is because otherwise you will have an uneven stereo image, sound stage. And this also means that one speaker is putting a lot more energy into a certain modal pathway, um, AKA a room mode, AKA somewhere that's gonna ruin your bass. So, if you want a good sounding room, your speakers must be equidistant from the sidewalls. There is no other option. Um, another huge error is using thin absorbers for the side reflections, your cloud, and then using thicker absorbers for in the corners for bass trap function. You should use the same depth and density once you've optimized your velocity absorber, your broadband bass trap, um, for both bass trapping function and early reflection function. Because everything is absorbing highs and only some of the units are absorbing lows, you will have an uneven reverb time across the frequency spectrum, which is simply an unmixable environment. That's defined as a dead sound. There, you cannot overabsorb if you absorb lows equally to mids and highs. Mm -hmm. If you overabsorb highs and mids, it sounds dead. It's not workable. To practically demonstrate what I mean by this, these absorbers, count as early reflection panels because they have been placed against the wall. These exact same units, 20 centimeters deep, because of their lack of rigid backing, become base trap function when placed diagonally over the corners because the air behind the absorber until the wall is calculated as the absorber itself, therefore increasing the absorption. And the last big mistake that I notice a lot of is Assuming that acoustics works like sound engineering. In, in fact, acoustics is so counterintuitive because it relies heavily on laws of physics, etc. It's not so much about um, sound electronically or digitally or 
in, in circuitry. Um, it's about the physical propagation of sound in volumes of space where it doesn't want to be. Sound wants to be in the free field. As soon as you control it into a volume of space, you have a problem that you have to deal with, with acoustic treatment. Thanks for being here with us today, John. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any more videos.